Good morning, everybody. A few minutes early. My name is Dave Finale, and this is Real Estate Talk TGIF episode. Hold on. This is episode 276. And we are here with John Glutch of the Glutch Group, uh, who operates out of Arizona, San Diego, Las Vegas, and now North Carolina as well. John, thanks so much for coming on the broadcast today. Yeah, you're welcome, Dave. Good to see you and uh, looking forward to chatting today. Yeah, this is going to be great. So we're going to get started in just a minute. But here, let's start. Bit Nelson, hit the video. Real estate agents, are you looking to acquire clients consistently to grow your business and income for a great lifestyle? Well, this is Dave Finale, and I'm here to bring you the Real Estate Skill Builder broadcast, Real Estate Talk TGIF, brought to you by Real Estate Skill Builder and the Modern Agent Team. Welcome back, everybody. Again, my name is Dave Finale. This is the this is Real Estate Talk TGIF. Episode 276, 273 weeks in a row, brought to you both by the Modern Agent Team and NJHeroesProgram.com, where we help as many uh, heroes in our lives to have the dream of home ownership and to sell if they want. Um, we are here uh, to facilitate conditions in which we can help people grow their businesses as well as their lives. John Glutch, good morning. How are you today? Morning, morning. Doing well. Great, man. So I ask everybody a question to start the broadcast. And this question is 200 some weeks in a row. What does TGIF stand for? Uh, thank goodness it's Friday, right? You are really close. You are very close. I'm sorry. Correct. It is. Thank God it's finale. That's the uh, only way we can look at it. It's the right, right way to go. Anyway, John, again, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, let's have some fun and have a great conversation about real estate and helping the people that we work with and care about grow their businesses to help their families. So, John, I'm familiar with your story, how you started, where you came from. Would you share with our audience, you know, your story, your path, how you got from wherever you were to today, um, having such a great company and a great coaching company? Sure. Yeah, and I'll make it quick and hopefully relevant and helpful to anybody who might be listening uh, in terms of the different twists and turns and what I learned from those things. So I graduated from Arizona State in 2003 in Tempe, Arizona, and could not get a job. I had, I had a college degree in finance, and I was a very good student, I had very good grades, and, and just could not find a job. It wasn't even a bad economy. I have no excuse. I just couldn't get, couldn't get a job. So I, uh, I, in fact, got turned down for a bank teller job, and I had a wow. summa cum laude finance degree from ASU. So it was just kind of one of those things, honestly, as I look back on it, I think, uh, you know, it was just God steering me a different way because I ended up getting a job as an assistant for a friend who was flipping houses and he had started a company teaching people how to flip homes and we were doing conferences. This is when like, you know, that was a big thing, teaching people how to flip houses and we would do these live workshops and uh, people would pay us like five grand a piece to come and learn how to flip houses. And so I was his assistant. And it kind of all took off from there. I ended up becoming part owner of that company. We did amazing until it absolutely flopped <laughs> and during the market downturn, lost everything, you know, over leveraged myself, bought too many rental houses, short sold all those houses, had to shut down the company. That was in like 2008. So wow. learned a lot of lessons in that process. And it's a good time to go broke. If you're going to go broke, I was like, you know, 27, 28, not married, no kids. So not a bad time to go to zero and learn a few expensive lessons. Uh, at that time, Obama had started the program where you can, uh, you get paid like eight grand to buy a house. And so I had friends and family members wanting to buy homes and they knew I knew real estate. So they started using me and that's how my agent career started. So it was around, I got my license in 05, really started selling houses in 08 and did not do anything special for the first seven, eight years, sold like seven houses a year. And that was in 2008 when houses were 120 grand in Phoenix. So barely even a living. Right. And then got a hold of some mentorship. So I went to a Craig Proctor coaching workshop, went to a Brian Buffini workshop, started paying for coaching and I'm a good implementer. So I went to those courses and I did what they told me to do and it worked. Uh, I got, you know, grew very quickly and, you know, got to over last year, we sold 500 homes. I have teams in four different States now. And uh, that's a lot because of the mentorship and coaching I got along the way. And you know, Darren Hardy has been a great, mentor and friend of mine. Now I'm at EXP and my, the people who sponsored me at EXP, Dan Beer and Kyle Whistle, most notably have been gigantic influences on me. I've doubled my business twice since I moved to EXP because of their mentorship. So I've just learned over the years that finding the right mentors, the right path, the right 
program is a, a big deal and then just implementing it, right? So it's been a, a fun journey, lots of ups and downs, lots of painful lessons, but I'm very thankful. Now I've got uh, two little kids. I've got an eight and a nine-year-old, Trey and Eden, and then uh, my lovely wife, Bryn, and we live out in San Diego. Fantastic. I, I, I love the story, and there's it, and there's always ins and outs to every story, but I, I want to hit something at the end of it where you're talking about the right mentors, the right people, et cetera, et cetera. You talked about, you mentioned Fred Proctor, and Brian Buffini, and Darren Hardy three amazing individuals that uh, I'm well aware of. And, but you also talked about uh, you moved over to EXP and you had great mentors and stuff. And one of the things that I've seen, I am an EXP uh, agent as well. Um, one of the things I've seen is, and I think you'll agree with this, is the collaborative effect of the people you, you, you're you with, right? Yeah. You talk a little bit to that and how that's been able to help you grow your business. Yeah. You know, we just got, I was in Montana two weeks ago with, a hundred agents in our group, uh, and then a well, probably 50 in our group and 50 guests, folks who were just coming to check it out. And at the event, I spoke at the event, it was two of the days there was about a three or four hour workshop where people got up front and shared ideas. And I learned some things from that for sure, but I learned more from hanging out with everybody. So the way they structure Dan and Kyle put that event on Dan was beer and Kyle whistle. And the way they structure those events is it's only four hours a day of content. And the rest is hiking mountains, you know, going to the restaurant, being on the pontoon boat on the lake, going to a, a beautiful um, private resort where we had our own kind of party set up with live music. That was more than half of the event. And it's where I learned the most stuff because this is a bunch of agents who are, you know, world-class agents doing at least $50 million a year in sales. And you just talk, you know, you just, you just get conversations going, Hey, what's working, what's not working. How are things going? You become friends with people over multiple events and it's really, really fun. And that's the same thing that happened with Proctor. Like certainly there was a lot of the coaching elements that I picked up and, and learned from and, and grew right. from, right. but a giant part of it was I was not shy. Anybody who spoke on stage, I'd go find and Hey, can I buy you beer? Can I buy you a drink? because those were the people doing it. They were the ones, what was the secret? Cause there's 500 people in those coaching rooms. Right. And most of them were failing, like just statistically, they weren't doing much at all with the coaching. Right. But there's maybe 50 who are absolutely crushing it. So what's the difference? What is it about those human beings that's unique? And so for me, I went and found those people, figured out how they got these ideas implemented, how they actually made things happen and learned a lot from those conversations. And that's, I think, how I became one of the people on stage two years later was being around the people who were on stage and learning from them. Right. And you know what it is with that is I also just came back from a, from a from an event, uh, the Chef Lake Tahoe Mastermind. And, and one of the things that the outlook and the way I looked at the whole thing was I was going and I, I, I was really, I really wanted to dial myself down, keep my head down. And I was, I was looking forward to being the dumbest person in the room. Right. right. Yeah. Because there's questions you want to ask and you say, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't ask that question. And but because we're now really in convention season and all this other stuff where we got stuff with EXP con and next week is FubCon, And then we've got other things coming up in the local areas. And, and the important part of that, I think, for everybody is ask the questions you don't want to ask because you don't want to sound silly. Yeah. And, and, and that's that's the way I looked at it. I mean, I would reach out to different people. And oddly enough, strange, strange, quick story is David Brooks started the day off um, talking about mentorship and a mentorship program. And I really wanted to talk to him. I didn't get a chance to. And I wanted to talk to him about this broadcast, et cetera. So I reached out to, to him through Messenger, talked a little bit. He came back really quickly. And I really didn't get much time to talk with him. I go to the airport Wednesday night to get the, uh, the, uh, the red eye back to New Jersey. And I'm about to get into security line. And I run into David Brook. I mean, just like little things like that will happen when you when you really set your mind to really learning. I mean, was that luck? Maybe, but maybe I was supposed to. But anyway, the events are really important. And the event you went to, I went to, uh, it's just, you know, networking. That's a word used so crazily sometimes, but it's really important to have those conversations. So getting back to your path and getting back to, you know, where you came from and everything. And one of the things... I read and I hear, and it's typical of a lot of people. One of the things I read was a roller coaster journey of doubts and triumphs. And I think that's really important to discuss simply because, you know, I run into the new agents all the time and they get really excited. They're all gung ho. They're making appointments and they can't convert or they can't make appointments or they're afraid to get on the phone 
and maybe they'll do a couple of deals and they don't understand. And then there's, there's guys like, you know, the guys like you and others that, you know, figure it out, get the training, get the coaching and move forward. Talk to me about the feelings of the doubts and triumphs and how you get over that hump of that roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, I think confidence is maybe the word I would use. I don't know if it's exactly what you're asking, but one of the things I believe is that confidence is the most important attribute for anybody trying to sell something. And the challenge with confidence is that you cannot fake it. Like you can, the whole idea of fake it till you make it is actually the path to some degree towards confidence of like, you just have to have the courage to get out there and commit to it, to make it happen, to do the thing, whatever it is, until you are good enough at it to actually have confidence. And that is a difficult path because it requires courage and that requires the commitment to actually do the thing. So most people are not willing to pay that price. They're not willing to be uncomfortable, to be in the mess for long enough to go just fail and be really bad at open houses or really bad at cold calling or door knocking or whatever long enough to finally get good at it. But the people who are, they do have that courage and then they commit and then they actually get the confidence and then now the world becomes their oyster, right? Once you've got confidence, you are so much better at selling. You're so much, you know, I don't think anybody, if I was saying, hey, do you think I would be, if I were to ask somebody like, hey, do you think I would be successful if I went and did 10 open houses? Do you think I would do okay at those? I think everyone would say, yeah, because I've earned a ton of confidence. I've done this a thousand times. So I think it's just getting through that first couple Sometimes it's a year, you know, those that season of, man, I am just committing. I'm going to be courageous until I earn the confidence, knowing that eventually the confidence will come. <clears throat> have the faith. It will happen. Very few people willing to do that. But the people who are uh, become millionaires, they, they become successful. Is there is there a shortcut to learning stuff to gain that confidence? Is it a cockiness that one could have to get started? What's what's the is there a quick way to confidence and to actually get yourself going into business? Because we see a lot of people, not a lot, we see some agents doing really well right away. Is there a a shortcut? I think there, there's definitely a shortcut to confidence. One is if you've got, if you're a confident human being, you know, you were raised right by your parents, you've had some other successes in life, whatever, however you got there, that's going to translate over into any area of your life. Even if you're, you're new at something, you're still going to have some level of confidence that just helps. So there's some people who just naturally come by it. Right. Right. For anybody, though, who's looking to shortcut confidence, the key, the the absolute secret is consistency and massive action and repetition. If you want to become a confident open house sitter, do 30 in 30 days. I don't care what your baseline was. You could have started as a very unconfident, you know, weak person. You get through 30 in 30 days, you will be a whole different human being. But most people, again, are not willing to pay that price. But you're able to, if you do, if you take that kind of massive action and that kind of condensed time frame, it's a microwave. It's a shortcut. It's incredible how much faster you can get things done. I've got a guy on my team, young guy. His name is Drew, and he's incredible. He's, I don't know, 25 or so. And he's on our Zillow platform, so he takes Zillow leads. And a lot of our Zillow leads are very low dollar, like trailer park homes, they're not going to make a lot of money on them. But his attitude from the very beginning has been, I don't care. I just, I'm just going to sell houses. If I make $500 on a deal, that's $500 I didn't have. And he is crushing it. He's incredible. He's our best converter by far. And as he gets better and better at what he's doing, he's earning the right to get those bigger and better leads because he's earning confidence. I can trust him with a million, two, $3 million buyer because I know he's going to treat him well. And he's right. got those reps under his belt. So he just wasn't afraid, jumped right into it. He's just doing it every day. He's just he just decided that this is a real job and this is what he's going to do and it's going to grow for him. He just he just said this is what I'm doing. Is that correct? Yep. He just made a decision early on and he's still that way. Like he's he's now earned to his way to you know better quality leads and he's closing bigger deals and all that stuff, but he is still the the first guy to pick up the phone on you know, $150,000 trailer park lead in San Diego. <laughs> and those are hard to convert because those have $4,000 land a month land leases on them. So you think you're getting a $150,000 house and it's like, no, you're not. So you have to have some skill and he's just great at it. He's really done a great job. So I think that's it. It's, it's massive action and consistency, putting a lot of activity into a short period of time that will very quickly earn you a lot of confidence. 
So there's a lot of people that will that will see this and ask, well, that's just crazy. 30 open houses in 30 days. John, how do you do that? Yeah, we had a you, you and I were in Montana, as I mentioned, at the one of the I stood I stood up at a conference in February in San Diego. And I said that same thing. I said, if I was going to move to some new place and you drop me in whatever, Connecticut, I got no connections, no momentum. How would I need, how would I succeed if I needed to as an agent? How would I get a deal done? How would I feed my family? And I said, I would do 30 open houses in 30 days. And I promise you I'd have escrows at the end of that 30 days. And I said on stage and all of you just heard that. And probably most of you believe it and nobody's going to do it. And sure enough, we're in Montana and one of the team leaders there told us the story of one of her agents who did it. He actually went and did 30 open houses in 30 days. He made it a charitable thing, which was a brilliant idea that I didn't share. He just came up with. He was it was uh, he was inviting people to bring like canned food and that kind of stuff. So it's 30 open houses in 30 days to feed the whatever food bank. Right. So he could promote it and make it a big deal on social media and all that stuff. Super brilliant little twist. And the guy did it. And I asked afterwards, like, how do you do? And she said, I think he got five deals out of it. So incredible. And sure, it's hard, but just make a decision. Just decide to do it. So 30 houses, 30 days in a row. That's what he did. That's incredible. Amazing. That's yeah. Amazing. I mean, so, look, anybody could do it. You bet yeah. you've done what, 273 of these in a row. That's incredible consistency. The amount of human beings who would commit to it and actually do it is almost zero, a rounding error of zero. So you just got to make a decision to do 30 and 30 days. That's uh, to me, that's not even that hard. I mean, you can do anything for 30 days. So I, I think it's just a matter of making a decision. A, you got to believe, have some faith that I'm right. And then B, just make a decision. Like, this is what I'm going to do. I, I think, you know what, man, I, I, I always said this uh, to people in my brokerage years ago. I said, look, you know, we've got all these things and, and really this is not, this is not rocket science. This is not brain surgery. This is this is just t we're salespeople. I mean, you know, yes, we 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 are there to convince people. We are there to to have conversations, and we're there to to bend stuff here and there. But the the thing is, is that if you just do the work and have some blind faith in what your leader is telling you, you yep. wouldn't be working with me if you didn't if you didn't have some of that to begin with. Yep. But as a new agent. You know, you've got to take that blind faith and you got to say, OK, well, this is a guy that, that knows what he's doing and he's done it. So, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And I think yeah. the biggest problem, I don't know if you agree with this or not. People have heard too much, uh, all the wrong stuff that this is easy and that HGTV is the real thing and all this other stuff. Would you agree with I mean, it's actually a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it turns out selling houses, especially in the beginning, is difficult. And one of the things I think there's a bunch of reasons people don't commit to simple things like I'm going to prospect two hours a day, every day, come hell or high water, or I'm going to do 30 open houses. Any of those things that everyone kind of knows will work, but they don't do is I think mostly because the distractions and the other shiny object opportunities are so appealing uh, that they win. So it's more fun to post something on social media and get a bunch of likes. It, it fuels our fire, our primal fire for approval from the tribe. And that is a very appealing, almost addicting feeling. And it's hard to say no to that, that feeling of instant gratification, whether it's posting on social media or whether it's just, I don't know, going to the movies, having fun, taking a day off, whatever it is that you would be drawn away from this hard work into that feeling is so good as opposed to the feeling of going and sitting in an open house and the possibility of zero people showing up. You put out all these signs, you're sweating, whatever. That's not fun. And it is a, it's so simple, but it's just kind of human nature to decide to do the yeah. easy thing. Yeah. And it's, and it's all about, I mean, you, you've used all these words, discipline, commitment, et cetera. I think you can't have, you can't have a commitment unless you've got a discipline. You know, it's like going to the gym every day. It's like, you decide to lose weight, which is a completely other subject and topic. But the thing is, is that it, it does take the discipline to have a commitment. You mentioned courage earlier. That's also it to grow the capacity and, and the clarity to be able to do it all. Just threw a whole bunch of shit out there. But anyway, you know, um, so 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 talk to me about where we talked about confidence, right? And 30 days, 30 open houses in 30 days. And we also talk about, you know, 
getting started somewhere. Is there a better place to grow your business from, I mean, getting started, John, or someone that wants to go from, let's say, 10 to 25 transactions or 10 million to 40 million? Is there a huge difference in those three, those three types of agents? Yeah. So here's the good news is that real estate, once you get momentum, does become a lot easier. Like, for example, I've got 1,600 past clients. I could, you know, I've got a big team and all this overhead and whatever. But if I just decided, you know what, I just want to sell houses, uh, you know, I'm going to get back into product, like I don't go on appointments anymore, any of that stuff. But if I said, I just want to sell some houses and, um, you know, I'll take the very best leads that come my way, the high, I'm only going to work a million dollars plus, and I'm only going to work with people who just call me. Like I have so much momentum and so much history and such a valuable database that I could very, very easily do 40 million a year without any prospecting, like very little effort. But that took freaking a lot of work and yes. a ton of energy and time and money. And I mean, it's it, the amount of sacrifice required to get to this point is gigantic, right? So, the, but that's the good news is as the, the saying goes, what's the best time to plant a tree? Well, 20 years ago, what's the second best time to plant a tree today? Right. So start planting the tree today. So that's the good news. The bad news is you do have to pay the price up front. There are a few exceptions, right? Some people sort of stumble into things and whatever that happens, but it's, it's just a matter of deciding I'm going to pay the price for a while. And for me, I had this exact experience with um, agent attraction. So EXP at our brokerage, you can uh, get paid by the company to uh, let people know about your experience at EXP. If you've had a good one and I have, you have, we can share that with people, invite them to check out the company. And if they join, we get paid uh, on an ongoing basis from EXP for those people being at the company. And it's not a lot of money at first. So you kind of have to go on faith and it's slow. It's not like selling houses where you could meet someone at an open house and write an offer today. That does not happen. Recruiting other agents to a brokerage, it's slow. And in the beginning, I just had to have faith that it was going to work. And I saw a lot of very smart people, smarter than me, more successful, wealthier, who were doing it. And I thought if it's good enough for them, it's probably not stupid. So I'm going to give it a go. And I put in my time and it was slow. And I had a lot of momentum and a lot of confidence and all that stuff. And it still was slow. And for a year, it was like, what am I doing this for? This is not paying me much money. And about a year in, when it clicks over and all the people you already recruited start getting, earning you more money. And now all the new people, it's like, oh, this is why. And now I'm almost three years in and it's like, oh, this is a substantial amount of money. And it shows up every month. It's very uh, sustainable. It doesn't require me to go sell it. It's, it's truly passive income. And the amount of money I'm making now is far greater than I thought I would. And I'm very, very glad I planted that tree three years ago. But at the time it sucked. <laughs> so you just got to go plant your tree. You got to start the work. You know, I, and, I, and I can I can really vouch for that and how you build and how you grow and everything else is for myself. You know, I have sold my business six years ago. I know the difference in where I'm starting now. And I had a big I mean, it's just like anybody getting into real estate. Right. I had to figure out if I still wanted to put the time in the effort to build, the, have the confidence to build the momentum. And, and what you've been able to do is 1600 past clients. And Bill Pipe says that you have to do the prospecting every day. When can I stop? Probably take you three years, three years or so to get a thousand in your database, past customers, SOI, et cetera. When you do that, you can stop with the really, 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 really hard work and discipline. You'll still have the discipline, but you'll have a business that you want to have where you're going and you're just like, you're rocking and rolling. John, you've advanced to, to different things and grown um, over the years to where you are now with, you know, you're in four different states, which is, which is tremendous. I don't know how you do it. Uh, I know you're extremely busy and you're taking an awful lot of time for family, which is, which is beautiful. Right, man. So, you know, it's, it's the momentum is built every day. It's not something that takes years to get there. And that's the thing, the most important thing that I like to bring forward with new agents, with agents trying to scale is you just keep going. Yeah. You have to have that blind faith that we talked about. Yeah. Um, so, so it, it took you a while to get where you are and through EXP, being able to grow that too. Um, to, for someone that wants to start a team, for someone that's thinking about a team, they're starting to do their business. Where, how did you go from single agent to team? 
Yeah, for me, it started with I hired one. So when I when I decided, okay, I'm going to start a team. I had already built a company that had employees and all that that failed, and that sucked. And so when I I was had just decided I'm going to be by myself. I'm just going to I'll sell as many houses as I can on my own, and that'll be the end of it. But that was a fear based mindset, right? That was that was not what God had planned for me. And I remember driving down the road. I remember it to this day. And I just felt like, honestly, felt like the voice of God was like, Hey dude, that you're living in fear. It's time to make that next step. It's time to get out of fear. And so we hired my very first person, a guy named Justin Benson, who I'm still friends with today. And he runs now a real estate tech company. He's incredible, successful, he's an awesome guy. And he was just the perfect guy. I mean, he was brilliant and young and he wanted to learn from me very much like what I did when I started with my mentor. His name is Jean Klinkhammer, an incredible human being who I learned so much from. And he was my assistant and he just helped with everything. But he was so good and so sharp that very quickly he was out showing buyers houses and all this other stuff. But I didn't pay him a split. He was always on a salary and his salary, of course, increased over the years. He ended up being a partner of mine and then went off and started his own thing. But that was it. I hired an assistant first and then I hired, started hiring virtual assistants. So overseas team members. And that's exactly the way I suggest people do it today. Although I would have switched the order. Now, knowing what I know about how virtual assistants work and how good they are, I would have started with overseas team members because it's so much cheaper. I could have started earlier. So, you know, for uh, $800 a month or so, you can get yourself a full time team member overseas. And they're incredible. Now, it takes some organization, takes some yes. thought. You know, you have to have a system where you can collaborate. We use Asana, A-S-A-N-A, as our task management system that we collaborate. We have now, I don't know, 15 overseas virtual assistants. So they run a large portion of my business now. So that's where I would start is to hire your first assistant. Well, you know, it's 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 interesting you say that because that's one of the things that I have done. And it's been, I've had, look, it's not going to be perfect every time, every person you hire. Um and I've been really, really lucky with with uh, the gentleman that's helping me out today on this broadcast, uh, who works really hard, always gets stuff done. You, you mentioned Asana, and that was actually on my list to ask you about. Talk to me about Asana and how that helps either a single agent or a team leader such as yourself. You need to have, as a real estate agent, or really anybody trying to get anything done, some system for task management. Everybody has a system, whether they call it that or not. Many people's system is they live out of their email. So that's kind of their to-do list is their email or they have a yellow pad of paper or their reminders app on their phone or whatever, right? It's all of those systems are unsustainable and do not facilitate teamwork well. So you need a system like Asana, Trello would be similar, Monday would be similar. I like Asana the best. I've looked at all, everything I could find, I looked at. And I think Asana is the best. It's very inexpensive. And what it allows you to do is organize your daily task load in a thoughtful way. And it allows you to collaborate. So you're looking at a list of tasks, all the different things that need to get done today or next week or whatever it is. And you're allowed to, within Asana, you can add people as followers or collaborators on your tasks. So you can assign tasks to different people. And on our team, you know, we have, I don't know, 40, 50 people on our team. So right. everyone's collaborating, working together. The graphic designer gets his part done of the task. And then it goes over to the social media manager and she gets her part done. And then it gets posted by my assistant. So everybody's sort of got their hand in the pot and everyone's on board. And it really is a great teamwork facilitator. But it's important to start even if you're by yourself. Like even start now as if you had a big team. And then eventually it'll become so much easier to grow your team. So it's as simple in the beginning as just signing up for the program, mm -hmm. get the middle tier. I forget what it's called. The middle price point is the one I recommend and dump all of your stuff that you have to get done into Asana and then watch some YouTube videos on how to get good at using Asana. And those, there's a million of them and you'll really scale up your skill quickly. It's pretty easy to learn. Yeah. So when it comes to lists, I, I'm actually have been, the king of the yellow pad, you know, and I kind of learned that from my dad. My dad would have like six, seven, eight, ten pads, you know, and all different stuff on the pads. Oh. John, I, I'm I'm a I'm a prisoner of that, trying to get away from it. Is it just you dive into something like Asana or uh, and just get rid of the paper? But if I don't have it in front of me, this is an excuse, right? If I don't have it in front of me, how am I going to remember to do it all? Yeah, yeah. So the way I, anytime I'm getting my team onto a new platform of any kind, software, new system. I test it first. And then once I'm confident it's legit, 
um, we go all in. There is no, it's like we pull the freaking ripcord. Whatever we were using is dead. <laughs> and the new thing is all that matters. So we go full throttle, blitz, launch, get it onto the team. That's all we do. I, when I, once I'm confident, I'll, I'll dabble myself, but once I'm confident, I'll do that first and then I'll get the team on board. So, you know, I'm telling you it's not as good. That's probably good enough for you to go because we have trust for you to go. All right, look, I'm, I'm going to give this a go. So I would spend my suggestion for anybody looking to start us on. It would be like, okay, commit to over the next week, not month, not six months, the next week, learning enough about it. So maybe it's an hour or two a day of YouTube videos. It's going to have a cost up front, but I'm telling you that upside is gigantic. So maybe it's a couple hours a day of watching YouTube videos, playing. You're putting some of your tasks from your yellow pad into a sauna, but you still got the yellow pad, your security blanket, your training wheels, right? To keep you safe. <laughs> yeah. But you, once you learn the system and it doesn't take long, a week worth of hour or two YouTube videos would be plenty. Then you'll have the confidence to go, okay, look, I'm, I'm burning the, burning the bridges. I'm done with this thing. I'm moving on and your life will forever change. It's like, you know, I, I like CrossFit and a lot of the stuff we do in CrossFit workout stuff is skill-based. So you learn a way to do a thing like pull-ups. There's like three or four different ways to do pull-ups, right? And one way is called a kipping pull-up and it's a little easier, faster way to do pull-ups. Well, there's a easier, faster way called butterfly pull-ups. And I always wanted to do them, but I didn't want to lose a bunch of workouts because they're all timed, you know, you're racing. And I was like, you know what? If I, if I try to do butterfly pull-ups, I'm not good at those yet. And I am good at kipping pull-ups. So I'm just gonna keep doing the kipping pull-ups, even though it's slower because I don't want to take the time to learn. Well, I took three, four weeks. I just decided I'm done with kipping. All I'm doing is butterfly. And eventually I got good at them and now I'm really good at them. And I smoke everybody who's trying to do kipping pull-ups, right? So you just got to make the call. It's going to suck for a while. You, you just got to do it. Got to make it happen. Yeah. So you just hit a really sore spot with me with pull-ups and, 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 and just like, <laughs> it's like, I'm working, I'm working. I'm trying to get there. And it's just so hard for me. And I don't <laughs> right. know why. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm in much better shape today than I was six months ago. That's all that matters. So, that's still a James, book. Clear, James Clear says you should be far more concerned with your current trajectory than your current results. And that is such good advice. I have that on. I remind myself of that every single day. I have it in a little morning routine. I read that every day because so, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter yet if you're good at the thing. What matters is are you on the right path? Are you trying? Are you getting better? That's the key. So in other words, say that again. Say what you just said. because I Your want current to trajectory to is far more important than your current results. So uh, that's another good reminder for the 30 open days and uh, 30 days for the agent recruiting, whatever it is. Am I putting in the work? Am I, am I putting in the reps? Great. Keep doing it. The results might not be there. They will give it time. Yeah, We're I, doing I, like I, right now we have, um, you know, the winter, everybody in real estate sales, you know, they put it in neutral. They, they go, ah, there's not many people buying or selling houses. And then what happens is they don't have very many sales. Christmas comes and they don't have a lot of money. It's kind of a sad thing. They're going into New Year's Eve with these ambitions of having some kind of great year, but they have no momentum. And I am determined to help my agents, the people in my coaching program, crush the fall and the winter so that they have momentum going into the uh, next year. And the way we're doing that is with like a fall sales sprint where it's a 10 week program. We're starting uh, halfway through October. And you can DM me if you're interested in learning about this. I can tell you all about it. And the idea is for four weeks, we're going to focus on open houses. So I have a whole open house course on how to do open houses. That's fine. It's a really good course. It's spectacular. But the course is worthless if you're not actually doing open houses. So right. together as a cohort, we're going to take the group through and each week make commitments. Okay, you're going to do two this week. And we're going to report back next week on how, many, how the results went at the open house. And the results are, isn't really the most important part. You know, we want to have some accountability, all that stuff to, are we doing it right? Are we converting it? Are we making money? Sure. That all matters. I'm going to coach people based on, oh, that didn't work. I'd said this, that didn't happen. That'll be part of it. But the more important part is that we're together becoming the kind of person who sits open houses every week. That's becoming an identity shift. So if I can get people to shift their identity to, I, I do open houses, that is, or I am an agent who does open houses. That's an identity shift that will carry them through their whole career. And then the second set, so the second set of four weeks, we're doing micro events. So that's about getting more business from your sphere. So micro events are just tiny, tiny events, super simple, very low cost, very low planning time. 
And everybody, by the end of that four weeks, will have thrown an event and invited everybody in their database and asked everybody in their database for a referral. And they will have become the kind of person who throws events every month. And if I can get agents doing open houses and throwing micro events every month, that it will change their life forever. And so that's the focus is not only let's make the fall and the winter amazing, but let's become different kinds of people. And it's all what I just shared, which is your trajectory is more important than your results. Can we get you to the flywheel spinning in activities? Then the results will come. It's, it's just, it's inevitable. It's not a question. It's not a mystery. It will happen. John, what's a micro event? So micro event is a tiny, tiny event. So very like we throw events at the Glutch Group that cost fifteen thousand dollars. Hundreds of people, bounce houses, trucks, food, all this, right? A lot less of them now because of the way the market is, right? right? So that's overwhelming. The amount of agents who are interested in throwing an event is like zero because it's so complex and overwhelming. So a micro event is a what it sounds like tiny event. You could throw one this week. <laughs> so here's like an agent on my team, Chris, just did one. He called an ice cream shop and found out they had some tables and said, okay, great. Didn't make a reservation. Didn't set up some private room. That was all the planning he did was make a phone call, make sure they had a few tables. And then he posted on social media. Hey, I'll be at whatever Frank's ice cream shop. Uh, first scoop is on me and I'll be there Friday, 10 o'clock, whatever it was. Right. And then called every person in his database to invite him to his ice cream event, his ice cream event, which he spent zero time planning, had no reservation for it, right? All he did was show up to the ice cream event, gave the guy his credit card and said, hey, anybody who walks in here with my business card, it's on me. And so all the people who came to the event, me included, I went by and said, hi, he gives a business card and we give it to the ice cream guy and now we get a free ice cream, right? The magic is that the event was an excuse to call every single person in his database and go, hey, look, I'm, I'm having an ice cream event Friday. Would love for you to come by. And my script for that is not, calling people and saying, do you want to come? Because that's intimidating. Maybe they're busy. You don't want to get a lot of no's, right? They've got other stuff to do. It doesn't even really matter if people come. The script instead is, hey, I just sent over, so you'd create an evite. And, hey, I just sent over an uh, invitation to my ice cream social. I'm doing Friday. Just wanted to make sure you got the invitation. So you call like maybe an hour or two after you send the evite, right? They're, now you're going to get a yes, probably, because they probably did get the invitation. And say, yeah, great. Hey, got it. Hey, well, sure. Awesome. Hope you can come. Would love to see you and the kids. And oh, I saw on social media, you just had that awesome trip to Hawaii. How was that? It was great. Awesome. Fantastic. Well, sure. Hope you can make it. Hey, while I got you on the phone, I've got a buyer looking for a house over in North Park under a million dollars. Can't find, we're having a hard time finding a house. Do you happen to know anybody who's selling a house right now and would be interested in connecting with my buyer? So it's a way to ask for a referral in a very strategic way, in a way that's not awkward and it's not needy. And it shows that you're busy. You've got a buyer you're working for. You're hustling for that person. And, oh, no, I don't have a buyer. Awesome. No, no problem. Well, look, if you did have somebody who a seller, if you had somebody who you knew was looking to sell a home, would you be comfortable referring them to me as your realtor? Yes. Oh, yeah. Happy to. Or no, my cousin's a realtor and I would use her exclusively. OK, well, you take them off the list and now you, you move on. Right. So it's an incredible way to come from contribution with very little timing, effort, energy, money, and be able to have a really good excuse to call your database and ask for referrals. That's a micro event. This is this is genius, and the great thing about this is like everybody wants to be invited. Everybody wants to be a part. So the phone call in and of itself, and you said it's not an invitation. Did you get the evite I just sent? Yeah. Right. It's more of a follow up, more of a warm yeah. call than anything else. And as I said, everybody wants to be a part of the crew, the group. So they love being invited, even if they don't show up. Yeah. Um, and that's- more importantly, the agent it helps the agent get over the fear of making the phone call. Right. Because you have something to say. It's just awkward. Like I never, ever in my career called people and asked for referrals because it was awkward. I didn't want to do it. Now, right. no problem. You know, throw an event. It's super easy. Like that. what I just did, that dialogue I just gave, that is not hard. <laughs> Anyone can do that. Yeah. I, and I want to tell you, John, and I've, I've watched your stuff time and time again, as I said before we came on the air today, and I've gotten so many little nuggets from you about conversations. And you know, it's it's just, I mean, the way you talk to people when they call and ask about a home or, you know, the whole thing about, about showing homes and stuff. And I, I tell everybody, please look up John. Uh, <laughs> we're going to put his stuff here too. And and just, I want to segue into uh, the Clutch Club, your, the coaching that you do, right? Um, yep. And one of the things I read was, 
it's the program you wish you had. Yeah. You know, talk to me For about sure. what you do there and how you do it because it's 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 very cool. Yeah, thank you. I by the way, I appreciate you looking into everything and you know, just your your consistency in doing this is incredible, but then you're also prepared. You're not just showing up on these things, which is really admirable. So well done. Congrats, man. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. For, for me, when I decided to create a coaching program, cause I was already coaching my agents, you know, have been for a long time. I was already coaching the people in my group at EXP and I thought, okay, well, look, why not formalize this? If I make it something that I'm going to sell, it'll cause me, cause I know who I am to add even more value because if I'm selling it, I'm not going to just give you what you paid for. You're going to get 10 X what you paid for. That's the standard. Right. If I'm not delivering at least 10 times what you're paying. It's not okay with me. That's excellence is one of my core values. So I knew that if I started charging for it, that I would do a lot better job, even with the coaching I was already doing. And so I created it's John Glutch.com is my coaching website. It's got all the information there on how the program works, but it's effectively a six, six step plan to the, what I call the abundant agent lifestyle. So for me, I got into real estate for freedom. I wanted to have an abundant life, have extra time on my hands, extra money on my hands. I wanted to be able to live in a way where I was contributing to changing the world, making it look like heaven on earth. That's my mission. So I named it that because I want it to be holistic. I want the focus to be on helping people sell more homes and also just have a better life, right? Have more freedom, more flexibility, and more ability to change the, change the world. So that's the program. And the, when I said I made it like I wanted to make, what like I wish I had it, the program is designed to make it easy to find what you need. So my coaching website, for example, is very searchable and it's like, okay, I need to know how to do listing presentations. How do I find that training? That stuff's all really intuitive and easy within the program. And then you've also got a lot of access to me. So I was a part of Craig Proctor Coaching. As I became well-known in that program, I got to know Craig and he's an amazing human being. But to start with, I mean, you didn't talk to Craig, right? There's like hundreds of people in there. For my program, I'm live every single week and I have a Q&A at the end of every single weekly training I do where anybody can ask me any questions and I'll sit there as long as we need to for me to answer those questions. So I wanted people to have access to me to be able to ask questions as well. And then I wanted it to be affordable. So it's 297 bucks a month as of now that surely will go up over time. But for now, super affordable. It's 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 really meant to be kind of a no brainer for folks to be able to join. And we do a free 30 day trial. So if you go to johngush.com, you can check it out for free, see if it's for you. That's, that's really that's really cool and, I, and and there's there's a lot of things that you talk about there and a lot of a lot of pieces goal setting versus goal keeping non salesy sales skills course that really appeals to me because I think the biggest problem we talked about momentum we talked about discipline we talked about making the calls and getting over the fear we hit as well people tend for some reason we can have this conversation day in and day out and if I have to call you as a for sale by owner I now sound like a salesman yeah. Right. right. For some yeah. reason, I had, I had this one person I worked with over the years. Her voice went up an octave when she started making those calls. Yeah. And I said, voice, it's really obvious. Talk to me about that one thing, um, the non-salesy sales skills course. What's the point there? Yeah. So non-salesy sales is one of our, so the Abundant Agent Lifestyle has six different elements. That's what the six step plan, right? One of them is non-salesy sales. And that is what we talk about probably the most, right? Because if you're not selling, it's tough to have any of the other attributes, <laughs> you know, like uh, ha having uh, <laughs> extra money and, you know, all right. that stuff is, is a contingent upon being good at sales. But most people don't want to feel like a salesperson and certainly nobody wants to be sold. Let me give you a really specific example of this. So I gave you one already of the micro events where right. the, the fact that now you're throwing an event and inviting people instead of calling to ask for something, you're calling to offer something that's a significant change in the, the dynamic of that phone call. So that's like an example of how you can sell without being salesy. Another example specifically that happened recently of how you can sell without feeling salesy is when you're setting out open house signs. This is a training in my open house course. When you're setting out open house signs, sometimes you're going to need to put a sign right in front of someone's house in their yard or right in front where they would normally park or whatever. Right. That's very common. So the training I give is go knock on the door of the person's house and ask if it's okay to put a sign in front of their house. You're not selling anything. You're being nice. You're being nice, right? So right. knock on the door. Hey, is it okay? I'm putting the sign out there. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Yeah, no, no problem. Great. Hey, well, here's the flyer. Would love to have you come by the open house. It's over at 123 Main Street. Love to, love to have you see the home. Hope you can make it. And 
that's simple. You're not selling anything, right? Very, very easy. You have a good excuse to be knocking on that door as opposed to cold knocking on a door. Well, Tyler on my team, who's an incredible implementer, has watched my open house course 15 times, did this, and a week ago, got himself a listing appointment with a person who he put a sign in front of their house and went and knocked on the door because he said, hey, you want to come by the open house? They came by the open house and he had a conversation with them. We have scripts around what to do when the neighbors come by the open house because you know a lot of people see the neighbors come by and they're like, ah, this guy's a waste of my time. Well, no, that person might be selling their house. Let's figure that out. So we have scripts around that. Tyler used the script, got a listing appointment and is going on a listing appointment next week with that person. That's non-salesy sales. It's just changing the framework Fantastic. around yeah. the activity. same activity, door knocking, yeah. Yeah. different yeah. scripts, different language, different approach that makes you feel like it's not, it, it, you're coming from contribution instead of yeah. asking and taking. Right. And I, I got to say, John, this is, this is, this is differentiation and what your agents do and what we, what we do with this stuff, stuff, stuff. Um, you know, yeah, I want to thank you so much for coming on today. I know you've got, you, you've got some other things going on and as we do. And, and I, I just, I, I hope we've done given enough out here today where we've helped some people and I'm sure we have, you know, um, I have two things for you and then I'm going to let you go is first question is how can I help you grow your business? Ah, well, thank you for asking. So for me right now, you know, I'm out, I'm not, I'm not selling homes anymore. I am coaching my team, my coaching students and my folks at EXP. So for me, anybody I can help as part of the coaching program. That's why I do a free trial is you can come see if, see if I'm for you. Right. So, uh, you shoot anybody who needs some good coaching my way johnglutch.com love to you know have them try it out see if it would be a fit for them so feel free to send folks my way and then you know obviously we're always looking for referrals so we're in you know vegas north carolina phoenix and san diego and um would love to hear more from folks who need to buy and sell in those areas that's great that's great man I, again i want to thank you for coming on and i know you know you finally were able to come on we've been trying it for a while um and you did find out that you got a hat at the end of the broadcast and that was the, the kicker, the kicker. For that you. was it, man. That's what got me. <laughs> I know. I know. It happens for everybody, right? John, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Next week, we have a friend of ours coming on. Colton Whitney's going to come on. Oh, uh, another great agent. Um, just going to edit and team leader. Just, just a great man. Uh, finally was able to meet him in person last week. Um, just a great guy. So we've got that coming on next week. John, thank you. Thank you again. And everybody will see you soon. John, if you could just stay on for a second after we go off, that'd be great. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you all Thanks, real Dave. soon. Hit it, Nelson.